What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Picking Fruits channel. Today I will be sharing with you all the Picking Fruits Sterile Spore Swab Tech. And to my knowledge, this is something that we have come up with and we're the only ones that practice this to date. All right, y'all, so if you guys would like to do this at home, I'm going to be listing all of the materials that we use so you can follow along with us. First up, we have our sterile cotton tip wood applicators, and that's pretty much just a fancy way to say big ass Q-tips. These are the types of Q-tips that would be found in a doctor's office, healthcare provider's office. That's pretty much it takes saliva samples or like booger samples, stuff like that. Butthole samples. Next thing you're going to need, uh, some alcohol. It would make sure you keep everything clean, clean your hands, clean all your tools. It can be any brand, but if you can, get the 70%. You don't have to go all out with the 90%. Uh, another thing you're going to be needing, scissors. This is an extreme case of scissors, <laughs> but any scissors will do. And last but not least, to get this right the way that we do it, you are going to be needing a bag tech mushroom grow. And what this basically is, it's a substrate bag that has been mixed with colonized grain that is going to produce mushrooms for you. This is a really large mushroom bag and if you're wondering the size you can find these on our website at pickingfruits.com forward slash shop. And basically what this bag is is a substrate bag and here we have six pounds mixed with three pounds of sterilized grain, any genetics that you like, and out of it you're going to be growing mushrooms in a very clean environment. As you can see here, the bag is still sealed. The same seal from the day that I made the bag. So a few things that you're going to need to actually get this bag tag to be successful are going to be some substrate, pre-pasteurized in a mushroom bag. And the next thing you're going to be needing is going to be some colonized grain. And here we have three pounds of it. And this is corn, sterilized corn that has been inoculated with our preferred strain and let to colonize over several days to about a week and a half. And then what I do is cut the bag open, pour the grain into the bag, mix it up. After it's been mixed up, in a few days, you'll see some colonization taking place. So this is a fresh bag that I made about two days ago. And as you can see, the mycelium is starting to run through the substrate. After some time, your bag will look like this. It'll be fully colonized, looking white. And as you can see here, we have some primordia forming and that's the baby mushrooms that are starting to emerge from the soil with appropriate conditions. As you can see here, we have some humidity inside of the bag. So this is what you would consider fruiting conditions for the bag. And over time, these baby pins will turn into mushrooms. So once you have mature mushrooms, they're gonna to start to produce spores. And that is what we're gonna be taking a sample of with our sterile swabs. So if you already have experience with these bags at home, then you kind of know how this goes. So what I'm going to be doing is, for my personal use, I like to recycle my mushroom bags. We don't like to send plastic waste to the landfill. We try to recycle our bags as much as possible. But if you order something from our site, I guarantee you that we will send you a brand new bag that has never been used before. All right, so here we have our mushrooms. Still very clean. I am working in front of the flow hood, so these have never seen air. They've never actually experienced any kind of air that has not been filtered out. So I will take my swabs, both of them at the same time, whichever hand you work with. So just that easy, we've collected spore sample, very dark on the Q-tip. very carefully putting it back. Set it in front of the flow head and continue on to the rest. And the reason that I prefer doing this over actually swabbing the gills is that Many times when you swap the gills, you will actually get some gill fragments on your Q-tips. 
And that is not necessarily a spore swab. At that point, that becomes a genetic copy of the DNA that the mushroom has donated. So here I will keep working on the mushroom until I no longer see any visible spores on the mushroom itself before I continue on to another part of the mushroom. Whenever I'm doing this, I typically take about 20 samples from individual packets of sterile swabs. And the end customer gets two individual swabs for long-term storage. And if you've seen our How to Grow Mushroom series videos, which I'll link up to the top, you will see that you don't really need many spores on the swab to actually get a positive germination. So this swab will be considered a multi-spore swab simply because all of the spores have been dispersed throughout the bag and landed on the caps, on the stems, and on the substrate from multiple donors, meaning multiple parents, different mushrooms inside of the bag. So if I were to take a sample from this mushroom, from this gill, then I would expect DNA from this mushroom. Uh, but because everything has been so mixed up, I'm just going to consider it a multi-spore. But as you can see, many of these mushrooms are very big, extremely dense, not hollow inside, completely dense inside. And all of these are showing the same characteristics. Very dense stems, very tall, uh, wide caps. Both of these have about the same characteristics. If this mushroom were to grow out a little more, the cap would probably extend out to about the same. This one as well. So as you can see, the canopy, if this were to be on a monotub, the canopy on this culture would be about the same. So as you can see, there's spore dispersion throughout the whole bag. And if you're doing this at home, you want to make sure that all of your surfaces have been pre-cleaned. As I did before we started shooting, everything has been wiped down, everything has been triple cleaned to ensure cleanliness. Our hands have also been sanitized. And like I said before, we are working in front of the flow hood to ensure the cleanest specimens. We will continue picking up spores from any visible surface. The dark coloration on these mushrooms is indicative of mushroom spores. And if you guys are interested in acquiring some of these spore swabs, uh, the genetic lineage of these is Guadalajara, a Mexican strain that we have worked with for many years to help us produce these beautiful mushrooms. Very large specimens. A lot of them, a lot of these mushrooms are out there in the wild. but this is the first time that we will be making them available in swab form. So the reason why I call this the Picking Fruits Sterile Spore Swab Tech is because I have not seen anyone else in the community pulling swabs from their mushrooms in this fashion. Typically people would grow mushrooms in a monotub and then take the spore samples from the mushrooms after they've been harvested, but we take them from the bag tech because we think this is the cleanest way to get genetic spores off of your mushrooms without compromising cleanliness. 
so that when you get something like this from our store, the cleanliness is an absolute priority to us. Just like all of our other genetics, everything gets triple tested. So after these spores have dried onto the swab, I will actually take this to agar and make sure that all of the growth is clean so that we never introduce any contaminants to your home lab. And if you visit our site, we have a large selection of genetics. And in the item description, we will also tell you if they are sterile or not. We also do have a lot of varieties that are not sterile, that have not been grown in bags like this. So once I've collected all of my samples from this bag, I will pick off the remaining mushrooms and I will seal the bag and it'll probably give me second flush. It will not produce as many mushrooms as this first flush, but it might give us some even bigger specimens that we can select spores from. And if you follow us on Instagram, I recently posted my opinion on these bag techs and why I particularly don't like the bag tech. I find that there is too much bruising on the mushrooms and then we have a lot of these side pins that get smashed and just end up looking like a catastrophe. <laughs> yeah, super sad. I don't like to see mushrooms like that. So once I've picked off all of the mushrooms from the substrate, or most of them, I will reseal this bag and wait for it to give us another flush and another chance I collect these spores from it. And there it is. I've shown you the materials needed and how we complete the Picking Fruits Sterile Spore Swab Tech. And now I'm going to show you a runner-up that was also considered for this video. As you can see here, these fruits have spored I would say a thousand times more than the bag that we actually used. But if you can see here, we had way more side pins. All the smashed mushrooms on the side. Uh, probably more boards all throughout the bag. And also all of our fruits in this bag were smaller. So even though these mushrooms matured, and they showed their ability to grow in a bag, they still didn't make the cut. If I had gone with this bag, our spore swabs would probably be even darker, and I would probably be able to make more swabs out of them, but I'm not happy with the way they fruited. I'm not happy with the size of them. I'm not happy with everything that happened inside of the bag. Uh, so that is something that I always look for before choosing a fruit to harvest from. Alright family, that's it for today. Thank you for joining us. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're new around here, subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, thank you. We appreciate you. We'll catch you on the next one. Today, you are who you are today. See? You still need the Terranova version.